So this is Mo. Say hi, Mo. Hello. Mo is one of our patrons over on Patreon, and we were messaging today on Discord when I showed them today's video, and he volunteered to come and try the dish. So, Mo, do you like lasagna? Of course, it's like my favorite dish. Have you had macarona bechamel before? Not yet. All right, now Mo is gonna be the one to judge whether macarona bechamel is better than lasagna. Let's check it out. All right, to make the perfect macarona bechamel or bechamel pasta, you'll need to get every component right. First, we'll make the tomato sauce, which is a pretty simple sauce, but it adds so much flavor to the dish. Next, we'll make the mincemeat, and this is a pretty typical Middle Eastern mince, but the method of cooking is what makes it so juicy. And finally, we'll make the perfect bechamel, which we'll infuse with a secret ingredient for extra flavor. Now, to make the tomato sauce, you'll start by chopping an onion into a medium dice. You want the onions to lend a little texture to the sauce, and because we'll be cooking this for about 40 minutes, they need to be a bit big. Something about this size will work well. Place a pot on your stove, then add in a tablespoon of butter and allow this to melt over medium heat. Once it has melted, add in the onions you just chopped and saute these in the butter for about five minutes. You don't want them to brown at all, so once they soften and look translucent, you'll add in 500 milliliters of crushed tomatoes or tomato passata. I generally use canned chopped tomatoes when cooking as they have loads of flavor, but we want the sauce to be smooth, so I blended together a can of chopped tomatoes with 100 milliliters of water. Once blended and all smooth, that goes into the pot and gets mixed with the onions until well combined. Turn your heat up to medium high and add in one and a half teaspoons of salt, followed by three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper. Once that's mixed in, give the sauce a few minutes to come to a light boil, and when it does, turn the heat down to medium and allow this to simmer with a lid or jar for about 40 to 45 minutes. While you're waiting, you can start on the mincemeat, and the goal here is to make mincemeat that is super flavorful yet full of juices. To do this, you'll begin by adding one tablespoon of butter to a non-stick pan over medium-high heat. Let that butter melt, then you'll add in 400 grams of minced beef, and this is 20% fat to ensure there's loads of moisture in the meat. Once the meat has been added, use a spoon or spatula to flatten it out, pressing it down into the pan until it's about one centimeter thick all around. As soon as you've finished pressing it, start flipping the meat over in large chunks. In all the recipes, I used to let this sear for a while to develop a bit of browning, but I've since found that this technique makes the meat juicier, and that's key for this dish. Now use your utensil of choice to chop the meat into smaller pieces, and you should break up all of the meat so you're left with the smallest chunks like this. Cook these stirring the pan regularly, then when most of the meat has a little colour and it releases loads of liquid, you'll add in a chopped onion. This was chopped into a small dice, and you want it small enough so the onion disappears into the meat mixture. Once you've added the onion to the pan, you'll follow up with one teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. Finally, you'll take a nutmeg and freshly grate in a pinch of nutmeg that is no larger than a sixteenth of a teaspoon. This is the key ingredient to flavour the dish, and if you're not using freshly grated nutmeg, it's just not going to taste right. Mix in the onions and spices so everything is well distributed, and then you'll continue to sauté this until the onions are fully cooked. At the end, your onions should be softened and wilted like so. There should be no liquid left in the pan other than some fat, yet the meat should still be really moist and juicy. Take the meat out and set it aside while we finish up the tomato sauce. By now, the sauce should have cooked down and reduced into a thick texture like this. We accidentally used twice as much tomato as needed when filming, so you probably won't have as much sauce, but the texture should be the same. Lastly, we can make the bechamel, and this will probably be the creamiest and most delicious bechamel you'll ever have. To give it extra flavor, we'll be mixing in a bay leaf infused milk, and you can use this technique to infuse any bechamel with flavor. Start off by adding 500 milliliters of milk to a cold pot, then add in two bay leaves and turn the heat to low. You want to bring this to the lightest of light simmers, and let this bubble gently for about 20 minutes or so, before turning off the heat and moving the milk to the fridge to cool completely. About 40 minutes later, or once the milk is cold, start the bechamel by adding 200 grams of unsalted butter to a large pot. Turn the heat to medium, and you need to let the butter melt completely. Then once it has melted, add in 200 grams of all-purpose flour. Mix the flour into the butter, and this needs to cook for about 4 minutes to get rid of the raw flour taste. Stir this continuously, and you'll know it's done when the butter starts to seep out of the flour like this. Now turn the heat down to low, and you need to start adding your milk. In total, you'll add one and a quarter liters of milk, including the 500 milliliters you infused earlier. Add about 100 to 200 milliliters at a time, then mix this into the flour until all of the milk has been absorbed. You'll keep doing this, adding part of the milk each time, and you should switch to a whisk so everything gets well incorporated. After about four to five minutes of mixing, you should have incorporated all of the milk, and it should have this beautifully smooth custard-like texture. If there's no lumps and it's perfectly smooth, then pat yourself on the back for a job well done. To season the bechamel, you're going with two and a half teaspoons of salt, then follow that up with one teaspoon of white pepper. If you don't have white pepper, you're really missing out, but black pepper will work all right in this recipe. 
lastly you'll grate in another pinch of nutmeg and once again this is just a small amount but it will give the dish so much flavour. Mix that all into the pot then turn the heat to medium and let this kind of bubble away for about a minute. When that minute is up take your bechamel off the heat and you're pretty much ready to assemble. The only thing left is to cook your pasta. My little trick here is to add a beef stock cube to the pot with the boiling water and that will add beef flavour into the pasta as it rehydrates. Once that has dissolved and the water is boiling, add 400 grams of penna pasta to the pot, which is the correct shape for macarona bechamel. You'll cook this for 2 minutes less than the minimum time on the packet, so the pasta is still quite firm, then you'll pull it out and drain it. We're now ready to assemble, and first up we need to mix the mincemeat with some tomato sauce. Add a measuring cup of tomato sauce to the meat, making sure you leave behind another cup of sauce on the side. Mix this very thoroughly with the meat until it has all been well coated and looks all saucy like this. In terms of the bechamel, this may have cooled and formed the skin. If so, just mix that back into the pot and when this goes into the oven, the clumps will melt again. Remove about half of the bechamel and set it aside, then take the rest of the bechamel and add the pasta to it. Mix this very, very thoroughly so that every piece of pasta is well coated and looks like this. Now break out a deep oven baking dish. This oval shaped one we have fits our recipe pretty well. Add about half of the pasta to the oven dish, spreading it out into an evenly thick layer. The entire bottom of the dish should be covered and you should flatten the pasta so it isn't standing upright. When it looks like this you can add on the meat and depending upon the size of your dish you might have some meat left over. Once that has been evenly spread out you should add on the rest of the pasta and again form an entire layer so all of the meat is covered. Next you'll get the cup of tomato sauce that you set aside and you'll spread that out over the pasta so there's a good layer of tomato sauce covering the whole thing. The final layer is the rest of the bechamel and this can be kind of hard to spread out so I like to microwave it to make it a bit more malleable. You need to spread this from edge to edge and use it to completely seal in all the other ingredients. I do that by using a spoon to push the bechamel all the way to the rim of the dish, then I go around and clean up any spills with some tissue. Here's what my dish looked like and as you can see the entire top is covered in bechamel. Last thing you'll do is take an egg and beat it into an egg wash. Then you'll brush the top layer of bechamel with it, making sure you get a thin layer all over. Clean up the egg spills and this is finally ready to bake. Place this in an oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius and bake it for about 45 minutes, turning on the grill or broiler for the last 5. Take it out when the top is well browned like this and you can expect loads of spillage which is why I have it on an oven tray. You can totally eat this straight out of the oven but you'll probably burn your tongue which is why we let it cool for another 30 minutes before digging in. Even after the 30 minutes the bechamel will still be hot but it should be cooled enough for you to scoop out a delicious spoonful or like we do in our house cut a hunk and slice of this pasta. As you can see we have got all the layers well defined and even the tomato and bechamel layers on top are pretty obvious. Although this dish might require a lot of work it's definitely the kind of dish that you'll find yourself craving over and over again. All right, Mo, take a bite. Mm. Oh yeah? That's banging. That's banging. That's now, banging. which one's better? Lasagna or macarona bechamel? Easily, easily. Oh, bro, give me an Egyptian passport. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Macarona bechamel is better than lasagna. Now, Mo is just one person, but ask any Egyptian or any Greek person about pastitio, and they'll all say it's better. It's got the same layers, bechamel sauce, pasta, meat, and tomato, yet somehow this one tastes better. You need to try it.